want to talk about, you go ahead. And let me directly the camera So the, the issue with China is basically that uh, there's been a, uh, at least since 2005, there's evidence that they've been basically targeting this technology. And look, you expect them to do that, right? They have, um, they have obligations to their people and, and, and they, they want to build a better economy. And uh, industrial espionage is, is pretty common. What's disturbing is that in 2007, it was widely recognized that they were specifically attacking Oak Ridge and that even after this evidence was made public, the um, Oak Ridge essentially o offered them red carpet, open door policy and unlimited access. And I could see you making that mistake once, but shortly after their visit, they made their intentions known in clear, blunt terms. They were going to control the technology on a global basis through patent IP ownership, and they were going to roll this out globally as a, a, a baseload energy platform. So now you would think that someone in Congress or the administration or DOE oversight would say, hey Oak Ridge, how about, you know, kind of, uh, you know, buttoning it up, you know, controlling access or controlling what you're willing to share. But no, it actually seemed to accelerate from that point. And from that point on, the visits and the, and the availability and the, and the uh, of, of open access uh, seemed to increase. So, you know, you have to ask yourself, is the DOE and, and through it the, um, the, the national labs, are they intentionally handing the superior technology to China, and you know, with, with the full knowledge that we'll essentially be leasing it back from them, and that's inconsistent with you know, pretty much every principle you could you could bring to bear on it, and and so. What's the standard for uh, like how would this how would this operate in 20 years? How would you have a relationship with another country in terms of protecting the technology? So, uh, sadly. I, I got a lot of nostalgia for the Cold War because in the Cold War, you, it was illegal to sell the Chinese the, the most simple rudimentary computer. I mean, it, it, you know, we controlled any technology that left our borders and we were double vigilant on, on the uh, distribution of technology to the red countries. Like, I don't know, like I'm a big fan of China, really. The truth is they're doing what they should for their own people. But during the Cold War, we would, we would have held these, these technologies close to the vest, and we would have made sure that America led the, the development of these. And strangely, today, we have this, um, uh, I guess in the government, the only place that laissez-faire is, is occurring is in, in common sense and, and regulating you know, a, a rational future for our country. They just don't care. They just, have, you know, it's, it's like the opium dens of China. They just are going to assume, because it's easier than thinking, they're going to assume that this free market thing is going to deliver us all to a higher standard of living. And I think anybody with 30 years of cognitive and, you know, history would say that over the last 30 years, there's been a measured decline in our standard of living and a measured decline in our ability to compete. So obviously what we're calling free markets today is inconsistent with what the tradition of free markets were in this country for the previous 200 years. And, you know, I think we need to reevaluate what it was that made us a great country. And, and, and a lot of it was industrial policy and governments investing into, into basic sciences and governments um, essentially sponsoring industries that would compete with other countries on a global basis, essentially old-fashioned mercantilism. And that's what made us a great country. And I think we need to get back to that. And I, I just don't see that happening uh, without some tremendous shockwave ripping through Congress.
and 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 or China essentially leasing us back our own technology and every American paying China a one or two cent kilowatt tax every time we turn on a light bulb and when we try to compete with them in factories uh, on the manufacturing floor having that additional burden people have to look at this as, as an economic war and I've said this a few times there's an economic war going on that's much more dangerous than than Al Qaeda or or any of these uh, uh, war on terror scenarios the biggest war in the world the biggest war on America happens every day and it happens on the shelves at Walmart because every time we walk into a Walmart and we load up on Chinese manufactured goods that's the equivalent of American casualties in industry and in jobs and, and wealth so that's where the war is and I think people in Congress need to know that Thanks. All right. I'm going to keep bugging you whenever I get a chance. No problem. No problem.